for us to grow we must understand that it's not just about masses coming to Christ it's about these people being cared for and discipled discipled or connected to other people and growing in other people than Christ see circles are better than rows because in circles is where we get grow as disciples of Jesus Christ Jesus had a ministry to the masses but Jesus also had a small group of people that he poured his life into and these people they shook the world these people they spread the message of Jesus and this message of Jesus came to us if you read book of Acts which is like the Acts of his disciples you see that the people Jesus healed are not there the people Jesus raised from the dead are not there the only people who were there and made a difference were the small group of people Jesus gave his attention and care for. I want to tell you something that as great as our conferences are and they will be, our desire is what we saw this weekend to see this every single weekend. Amen. But it's not going to change our city and it's not going to change the world until each one of us we get discipled or we disciple others. We're stepping into a season right now within a few weeks, about two weeks, we're going to launch or relaunch our small groups. We're not a church that has small groups, we are a church of small groups. Meaning all of our pastoring, all of our care is done through small groups. If you have a baby that got born, most likely the pastor is not going to be there. Or if you have a funeral or other things, it's done, all of the care in our church is done through small groups. The pastor is not the big shot every person is a big shot because God calls the pastor to equip the saints to do the work of ministry meaning God calls the pastors to allow others to rise up heal the sick prophesy cast out devils and mentor other people in some churches in a lot of churches the pastor is the belly button everything comes to him he is the only one that controls our desire is to empower not control and these are not just slogans, these are not just words. For those of you who make this church their, your home, you know that, that that's the reality of how we live. In the conference, many people would come to me and say, hey, Pastor, uh, uh, a sickness came back. I said, great, Ivan, come over here. Pray for her. And this uh, person comes in, hey, I, I think the demon is still tormenting. I said, perfect, Pastor Sam. And so, and people come in, they're like, why are you not doing I'm like, I'm surrounded with like Superman. I just I just enjoy standing in the background I just enjoy how God uses them and then I hear how the Lord uses it it encourages me I'm not intimidated when the Lord uses other people in our team better I'm actually happy for it and that is our team that is our how church is supposed to be can somebody say amen you can write a few, uh, few things down is that the church will grow or shrink to the size that we of the care we provide 98% of all pastoral care is done by people who simply care. You don't need a person who has few numbers or few things before their name for somebody to help you. You just need a person who cares. People don't care how much you know, they want to know how much you care. That's right. And so as a church we want to see grow, not just grow big, but we also, also want to grow small and in care. We don't want you to know everyone. That's not possible. We want you to know someone and someone to know you. And someone to notice you when you're here and someone to notice you when you're not here. You must understand the early church, the what we see in the Bible, did not have a building or a cathedral for at least 300 years. First 300 years when Christians were killed for sport, when they were burned for entertainment of Emperor Nero, when Christians were thrown in the gladiator circles just for lunch for bears and lions and elephants church grew like crazy it eventually impacted the Roman Empire but it was not because the church had a permission to build buildings it because the church grew by house churches it multiplied by house churches when the communism came to Russia versus the communism in in, in China in Russia because the traditional church in Russia was based on two main things cathedrals and priests the only thing communism had to do is to burn the cathedral and imprison a priest and the church shut down. In China on the other hand, 
the church the early church did not just was not built on cathedrals and pastors it was built on home groups and small groups and the smaller gatherings so when the communism came in and thought they're going to wipe out christianity by killing the cathedrals and the priests the church during the emperor who banned christianity the church was two million people in china by the time the emperor died and he killed the cathedrals and the priests the church was 80 million people because of small groups and because the church spread other disciples telling other disciples 20 year olds leading 20 to 30 thousand people in different groups in China and the church is growing even today they're not allowed officially to build a building but they're multiplying we are one president away from the truth of the gospel being called hate speech we are one president away from preachers to be locked up for hate speech which means we don't know what's going to happen next in America where the churches will be allowed to meet like we meet right now you may say well this is a, a American Christian country and everything smell the coffee we're not a Christian country and our goal is not to make America Christian because America doesn't need to get saved people need to get saved Jesus didn't die for a country he died for people our goal is the hearts of men not the heart of a nation and when people are turned to God, God begins to shift things and we're not afraid of whatever is coming but what I believe might be happening and I agree with Francis Chen is that when the laws are going to be risen up and they're only going to get worse in this country against the truth and against us speaking the truth of God's word and the Christians are going to be busy fighting for the laws instead of that we have to understand we have to build a system right now that in case they take the building they don't stop anything because the church was without one for 300 years and it filled the Roman Empire come on somebody building doesn't determine the church the system of leadership development home groups and mentorship is what the church was what the church truly is and what the church should be this is just a bonus this is just a cherry on the top of the cake the real church is you and I living out our Christian life, discipling others, mentoring others, housing others, helping the poor, responding to the emergency and being a blessing to others and bringing the power of the Holy Spirit in our everyday life. Can somebody say amen? amen. And so I want to challenge you right now. This message is going to be different. We're going to have a series in a few weeks where it's going to be more focused on answering the hurts and the pains and the bad habits. But today is going to be a little bit different where my goal is to challenge you for those who've been sitting too long on your blessed assurance Jesus is mine to stir you up a little bit and say listen you've been in church too long you gotta start mentoring and discipling other people and so today is gonna be if you're first time this message is not for you it's for the person who sitting next to you and if you've been coming for some time I'm gonna be very direct and in the face partially it's my culture it's like that so excuse that let's blame it on the culture but but another part is that in in this congregation and, and this preacher doesn't like to sugarcoat things we just like to say it the way it is and a lot of people love that when uh when I preach the only problem is when I continue to talk after I finish preaching come down from the pulpit and I continue to use the same technique then that gets me in trouble but as long as it's on a pulpit it's usually fine <laughs> so while I'm on the pulpit we're going to take advantage of that when I was getting married uh, because me and my wife already purchased all of our furniture before we got uh, married and so on my wedding day you know I knew that people will come and it's it's a culture custom in our culture to bless people on their wedding and so I had a person that requested every guest that I invited for the wedding for our wedding not to bring us any gifts in the form of vacuumers towels and plates but to bring us cash if they wanted to bless us because we already had everything prepared for us that's how I wanted people to bless me if they wanted to bless me and so and then we had these five people I still remember I still remember them who uh who got the text message but they felt like they wanted to be very generous and one brought a uh, vacuumer one brought a cook a crack pot like this thing that cooks things and then one brought a set of plates and some of you sitting here right now I'm gonna call give an altar call for salvation <laughs> And I understand they meant really well and some of them I know why they brought those gifts because that's what they somebody gave them on their wedding 
it wasn't even opened and then I found that later they just keep on giving it to different weddings <laughs> and so and they brought that and I remember I came home and I was like man that, that's that's great but you know what I did with those five things I passed them on to some other weddings I didn't need them they were nice we already had the plates we already had the vacuum and we already had those towels today I want to talk about Christians who bring to Jesus something that is convenient to them but Jesus is very clear about that he's not necessarily interested in that which we're offering you have to understand that this whole thing that we have in our culture that it, it's the it's the heart that matters how you do it what you do doesn't matter it's the heart it's the thought behind it that matters it's not scriptural because God was very clear to people of Israel when you come to me you have to come this way he was very specific priests make sure they wear specific clothing make sure the animal is killed in a particular way make sure the blood is removed in a particular way make sure you come on a particular day I mean God was very specific in how he wants to be approached you can't just come to God and just do whatever you want and say well it's the heart that matters it does not work like that and today I want to speak to you about that the verse that I want to read to you is, is the way to begin is John chapter 11 verse 15 it says the following when they had eaten breakfast Jesus said to Simon Peter Simon son of Jonah do you love me more than these he said to him yes Lord you know that I love you and he said to him feed my lambs so Jesus is asking Peter do you love me Peter says si sí, senor mucho grande mi corazón loves you a lot I love you a lot Jesus you're great Jesus and you would think Jesus would respond back and say uh, Simon don't smoke drink get high and don't cheat on your wife you got it Jesus, you would think Jesus would respond subscribe to a bible reading plan on your version and do not miss the streaks <laughs> you would think Jesus would tell him don't do this and don't do that but the response of Jesus to do you love me is not just morality it's ministry he says feed my if you love me feed my lambs and then he asks again do you love me Peter and Peter says yes Lord you know that I love you feed my sheep G Peter do you love me yes feed my sheep do you know how Jesus wants you to express your love for him by caring for those that are his sheep now that's not the only way but this is one of the main ways Jesus wants that love to be expressed to him for those of you who are married a man especially you know one thing is that having love in your heart for your spouse is one thing that is a great thing your wife feeling that love is a total different thing I've not met a husband in a good relationship who doesn't love his wife but you can meet many wives who are convinced husband doesn't love me so what is the missing link we have this thing called love language a love language is the way you feel loved Gary I think as some author he described five of those love languages I had to learn this the earlier stage of our marriage I remember this particular Saturday we'll never forget it as long as I live my wife worked at BMW dealership as a part-time receptionist and she went to work it was very close to our house where we lived in Richland and on Saturday uh, my love language means the way I feel loved is acts of service so if somebody does something really nice for me I feel loved you don't have to tell me that you love me you don't have to spend time with me please don't spend time with me and hold my hand you, you don't have to touch me I don't like to be touched that's just kind of my thing um, I don't know if it's childhood trauma or something but uh, touching is not my love language and so acts of service is my love language for my wife it's the opposite her love language is physical non-sexual touch meaning to touch her like this it would mean the world to her and so for me being touched is just what do you want why are you touching me kind of thing so this Saturday she's working I'm thinking I'm gonna surprise her I'm gonna make her life so much better so I take the, the whole house I clean the house I mow the lawn I clean up the driveway I mean I, I make everything really nice I take my car I clean my car I go to the dealership I take her car without her permission I clean her car I mean everything is super spotless and after like six hours of doing this deep fried cleaning I am tired and so I am thinking waiting in the house she's gonna come in I think at that time I even got roses I'm thinking she's gonna come in and she's gonna bow I mean uh, adore me 
at least like the wife of Abraham call him Lord I, I, I thought he or she will say great ones I mean I could settle for the great one if she can call me Lord so my wife comes in she doesn't notice the lawn she doesn't notice the clean car she does not notice the clean house she doesn't notice anything she comes in and she drops her purse and she says I'm so tired sits on the couch and she says let's go for a walk and I'm thinking six hours thank you wouldn't be enough I thought on your knees hands up but not even acknowledging that I, I I slaved I'm like this is my day of rest and I I gave it for you and and I'm like I'm trying to comprehend how is I am tired connect with let's go for a walk because in my world if I'm tired I'm not gonna go for a walk and so I was really upset and I was hurt I went to the other room and I realized that I gave her something so means so much to me it meant so little for her because she wanted to be loved differently did you know how Jesus wants to be loved he says care for my sheep sometimes we give Jesus something that we love that Jesus appreciates but what he really loves is people that's why it says in Matthew 25 he will look at some and say I was in jail and you visited me I was hungry and you fed me I was thirsty you gave me water I was naked you gave me clothing and they will say in response back to him Jesus we actually have never seen you naked hungry or in jail and he will say this what you did to the least ones you did it for me no wonder Jesus looks at Apostle Paul who's persecuting Christians and killing Christians and he says Paul why are you persecuting me and Paul says Jesus I'm just just killing the Christians you you and me are cool just the Christians and Jesus says this how you're doing it to the Christians you're doing it to me which tells me this is the way I express my love to Jesus is what I express my love toward his people if you disciple people care for people bring them to Christ help people it's the way you're expressing your love for Jesus now it's true you can love people and never love God but you cannot love God and not love people and so many of you so many of you here today you mean well you live in a moral life you live a good life but I want to challenge you today could it be that you're cleaning a lawn and you're washing the car and you're preparing everything for Jesus and Jesus you may, you may not feel that favor from him because Jesus's primary love language is people begin to care for people I'm not saying to smoke weed and care for people because Jesus doesn't care about that. No, the smoking weed part and not drinking and not getting high, watching porn, that is for your good. But for Jesus' heart is people. That's why I champion the cause of opening small groups, encouraging you to be in the home group, to bring other people to church and, and lead home groups because that's how you express your love for Jesus you don't have to lead a home group to disciple others but home groups are a great opportunity where you can gather people so that you can care for them they can care for each other and Jesus's heart can be full can somebody say amen let's put our hands together for the Lord <laughs> secondly Matthew 28 verse 19 it says the following Get, go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you and lo I am with you always even to the end of the age so toward the end of his ministry Jesus before going to heaven he gives disciples what we call great commission not a great option not a suggestion but a commission it's our assignment on this earth and it starts like this go which speaks of evangelism speaks of inviting people speaks of giving altar calls giving people an invitation and then he says make I want you to see what it does not say it doesn't say make decisions meaning don't just put yourself pledge just say, oh they accepted Jesus that is great Jesus says that is not what really I'm after my goal is not to make decisions or make converts he says I want you to make disciples the word make indicates there's a process the word mate indicates they're not born like that they don't become disciples the moment they get saved they need to become make disciples are, are you with me and then he says you help them to get baptized you help them to learn more about the word of God and the discipline develop disciplines in their life and Jesus says lo I am with you always we must understand is when people give their life to Christ they have the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit touches them supernaturally every person has a, a unique destiny from God every person is uniquely loved by God 
and no matter how exciting tremendous glorious supernatural magnificent their encounter with God was they still need another believer in their life Jesus Christ was the Son of God and the Savior of the world and he still needed Mary and Joseph imagine Jesus the only person who did not need anybody would be Jesus because he was the son of God and he was the savior of the world yet Jesus needed Mary needed Joseph who were average Jewish couple who mentored Jesus excuse me they gave birth to Jesus first they named Jesus and then they protected Jesus from Herod before Jesus could step into his destiny. I believe God allowed the humans to take care of his child to model to us is that we grow spiritually into position where the Lord from heaven entrusts us with his newborn babies. If the angel of God would have come to you if you're a woman and says hey I want to bring forth my son on this earth can I borrow your womb? What would you say? Yeah, of course Lord. You would be saying, of course Jesus, I'm, that'd be so exciting. Do you know that today the Lord comes to every man and woman and says, can I borrow your schedule? Can I borrow your living room one time a week? Can I borrow your budget? Can I borrow a five minutes of your prayer time so you pray for others instead of yourself? And most of us we say, ah oh, Angel, I don't think it is a good idea kind of busy right now. I do go to church though and you, you, you saw my tithing record. I am fine. The Lord wants to borrow your life to begin to bring other people into maturity with Him. People need you. Somebody say amen. I remember when the first time I saw Edder. We were playing soccer. It was many, many years ago. We still drive by that field sometimes. We played soccer. Our English was, was very poor at the time and Edder came to see his mom here in town and after he saw him saw her he started to work with the, with the relative of his and he watched us from a window playing soccer and he came in and he didn't speak well English at all but Edder is very animated and so he doesn't need English to convey his point his hands can do the job and stuff so he quickly showed to us that he wants to be a part of the game he came he became part of the game we played together and we decided to take advantage of his lack of English and so we told him they were going to a party afterwards it was called a small group we didn't tell him we didn't want to explain uh, too long it will take too long to explain that it's a religious setting so we got him there not only he came there but we got him saved there we don't know what he's signed up for but it didn't matter and stuff so we're like we take advantage of, of his lack of English let's get him saved and Edder start uh, coming with us I took him to my to trips with me and and everywhere that we went in and then after a while we we some of you know Edder he got married and then Edder came back here you know today there's family of his of Tatiana's relatives who are here some of them are in our team other people that he interacts in the community that have come to know Christ but I can tell you one thing Edder would have not been here today if he would have only gotten saved we held on to him and still do till this day I connected with him took him sometimes he slept in my house we helped him with this we helped him with that and now today he's a great blessing to this ministry all the beautiful photos you see being taken by him because somebody not just made a decision but made a disciple everybody say hi Edder <laughs> so we were just talking about you Edder sorry bro right behind your back actually right behind the door and stuff I, and to me he's a reminder that people can become somebody great not only when we lead them to the altar but when we lead them into our life I was reminded even today a, a couple that came in for the first time you know how they came here not because an angel Gabriel showed up at home and said hunger generation 3203 West Sylvester go there on Sunday he said my sister's been inviting me I met another young lady who returned back to church and she said Vlad you know I kind of walked away but my mentor kept inviting me nobody's here because of God only there is Mary's and Joseph's average people who are used supernaturally by God to help people come to know Christ can you be a Mary and Joseph for this fall season do you feel the call of God to help God's children would you adopt a child if God would come to you and say I have a child could you adopt him for me could you care for them would you make room not in your womb uh, no, not, not for that but in your schedule in your budget in your heart 
that's the challenge I want you to write down number three is leading a home group or discipling others is the way of spiritual maturity I write to you little children because your sins are forgiven to you for his name's sake I write to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning I write to you young men because you have overcome the wicked one Apostle John writes in this letter and he breaks down three spiritual stages the first stage is spiritual children these are the people who need care you need to constantly watch over them you need to help them to tie their shoelaces you need to help them remind them they need to brush their teeth or help them brush their teeth these are children and we have people in church who are spiritual children spiritual children can do this they come they got saved and they after salvation they went on the parking lot and they smoked it for the glory of God they invited their friends that night got drunk why to celebrate their salvation and so and when you hear stuff like that you're like omg and you're like how could very simple when you're a child you poop that's what you do that's normal and so and when pe people do stuff like that and i hear sometimes pastors they they come to our services or our conference they're like i can't believe you have people smoke and i was like when you don't have people smoke that's what bothers me because that means you don't have non-christians coming to your church and your services and non-christians have to feel normal in the church the way i feel normal in the hospital when i have a flu i don't come to hospital and hear racism or people hating hating the people with flu no it's there i come in with flu and i leave without it and when people come in and they get saved and they have baby christians and they have challenges and everything that is normal and we have to be patient and we have to be long-suffering and understanding can somebody say amen But the second stage is the second stage of the youth somebody say youth youth is not an age it's a stage meaning it's a time where you can now manage things yourself it's a time where you read the bible on your own it's a time where you don't need to be reminded to come to church it's a time where the worship team leader doesn't need to go like this for you to raise your hand you are youth you know how to do that you know the system you know the drill you are self-cared means you can care for yourself and we have a lot of youth and we thank God for the people who are no longer needing that special attention they're good but that's not what everything stops what everything really God is aiming for is the father somebody say father and father is somebody who cares for other people father is somebody who mentors other people who doesn't just come in and say well I'm doing great I had a great weekend been reading the Bible um, good with my streaks kind of fasting praying because God's been great to me praise God it's somebody who comes into church and he's noticing wait wh wh where is he I haven't seen him for two weeks three weeks and let me text him and find out they don't just come to church and happy they came to church they're watching that other people where, where they're at I haven't seen you uh, let me meet with you for coffee this week why because I, I feel like you've been going through some stuff they are father figure it's the fathers that make a difference amen and what I want to tell you right now if you got stuck spiritually perhaps you're trying to become a superman or perhaps you're trying to become some this super youth when God wants you to be a father figure you don't have to have physical children to be a father you don't even have to have big money to be a father you don't have to have a house of your own to be a father you just have to have a heart enough that cares for other people and notices somebody now remember you can't care for every person but you can care for someone if each one of us cares for someone we make a difference Brian Astley who's uh, Brian everybody say hi Brian and so Brian is sitting uh, over here he leads the team of ushers but Brian was invited by my sister Solamira over Facebook and Brian came to one of our services he was overdressed for the Sunday that he came in and I for a moment thought that he come from like a more apostolic you know Pentecostal uh, I just did not know that he he comes completely from no Christian background so he had this association with the church that he had to uh, dress up and particularly dress up he came in and he didn't know how to behave in the service I love those people who don't know the system didn't know when to raise hands he didn't know how to pretend even because some people who don't know the system at least know how to pretend they know the system and so and Brian was so organic so real at a particular time Brian gave his life to Christ but see because of some of you know his story Brian OD'd four times in one month Brian's done more drugs and did all kinds of stuff and he had no his parents got divorced at a young age and he really had a rough upbringing and so Brian had no car and Nazar would pick Brian up every single Sunday go out of his way bring him here and some Sundays Brian wouldn't text him back 
wouldn't ask him for the ride so Nazareth would drive by himself without even asking him, hey do you want to go to church and pick him up and he would insist on picking him up for a month or so Nazareth was busy with something and Brian wouldn't come and Nazareth started to reach out to Brian finding out where, where are you what's going on why we haven't seen you here and Brian when I was preparing for the book and I was writing a chapter and I mentioned Brian's story Brian told me this he said Vlad if it wouldn't be for Nazareth to keep reaching out to me keep calling me and keep messaging me he says I would have never been back at this church he said I would have gotten lost somewhere over there in the world today not only Brian is serving Christ Brian has his own car Brian has a job Brian is going for his bachelor's Brian's mom got saved and today she went through the growth track today his sister came to know Christ and Brian is witnessing to other people I want to say a big thank you to Nazar I want to say big thank you to everyone who's like Nazar who doesn't just come to church and watching make sure you're on time but while you're at church you're looking where's your friends I have not, not seen them for a few weeks what's going on with them and then you reach out when somebody doesn't have a car that you loan your car and you pick them up I want to say big thank you for that because when you do that that's your maturity maturity is not just knowing if Adam had a belly button or not maturity is not knowing how many angels can dance on the top of a needle Maturity is not knowing a secret Hebrew code in the first ch 10 chapters of Genesis. Maturity is when you care for other people, not just yourself. Can somebody say amen? Praise be to God. I want you to write down number four is that leading others can unlock miracles in your life. Leading others can unlock miracles in your life. And the story of Esther, and I'm not going to read the verse right now, but Mordecai, he became like an adoptive father for Hadassah. Hadassah she was an orphan her dad and mom were dead, were killed in the war and he took her under his wing he mentored her raised her up he changed her name he gave her instructions and then when she went to become a queen he still kept in contact with her and and Mordecai saved the king's life Mordecai eventually saved the nation but I want you to notice something that Mordecai had as Mordecai had a trouble in his career Mordecai's political career was struggling and Mordecai did not ever stop and say you know what I'm not gonna babysit nobody I'm not gonna help anybody I'm not gonna save anybody because I'm gonna focus on my career there's nothing wrong with focusing on your career your education and your family but I can tell you one thing the best way to fix your problems is to put them in God's hands sometimes after you've done all that you've done you have went through all the counseling you went through all the step points you've done and you just seem you can't break through what do you do you put the same energy you did for your problems to fixing someone else's problem and you say God let's swap my battle is yours my financial situation is your financial situation I'm gonna go and help someone else I'm gonna go raise someone else and God you will take care of my situation me and my wife have been trying to have children for the last four years I'm not desperate for one reason in the last four years I helped a lot of children even right now I have people living with me and people have always lived with me who couldn't afford to pay. Some I paid off their cars and, and blessed them financially and I will continue to do that as long as I live. And I told Andres Bissoni because he started to prophesy and I've had more prophecies about my children that I have had about my life in the last 12 months. And I'm like what's going on? Why do people keep prophesying? I'm like what about me? I want a prophecy not my child. <laughs> and I don't have in my culture you have to have children right away within 12 months and and all this stuff but you have to understand four years ago I made a decision I made a swap it was in Ukraine what I said God about finances and about my future family I'm putting that into your hands and I'm asking you please take care of that and you worry about that I have a healthy desire to have children I have a healthy desire to prosper my wife wants to have a house by the lake so I have a desire <laughs> but I don't want the desire to be my desperation what I'm burning for is people who never had a father and mother and who are going to hell. What I'm burning for is for people who have cancer in their body, people who have diabetes, people who are suffering and hurting and I say God I'm giving that into your hands and deep inside of my heart I know that God will give me children and they're not going to be normal children. They're going to be on steroids. They're going to be crazy. They're going to be nuts. They're going to do stuff that I wished only to do and I want to tell you something right now as I even go through this season this, this issue is in God's hands it will be resolved and we will all be witnesses of that miracle but God is gonna do it at his time I have to take care of God's children that he puts right now into my life and you have to do the same come on somebody don't let your pain stop your purpose 
don't let your struggle stop your purpose whatever you're going through don't say I'm not gonna serve I'm not gonna help other people why because I'm suffering the best way to get out of your suffering is to serve other people can somebody say amen Abraham prayed for other women who couldn't have children God unlocked his wife's womb Joseph translated other people's dreams God fulfilled his dream Job prayed for his friends and God unlocked the blessing in his life my Savior Jesus Christ hanged on the cross while he was hanging he was witnessing to other people and God rescued him from the tomb whatever your situation you are stuck in if you've done everything you can at your power put it in God's hands don't be desperate and burn with your purpose to save other people's lives disciple other people's lives and God will solve your problem God will fix your issue and God will heal your disease and God will save your children and God will restore your business and God will move in your marriage and God will fix those things can somebody say amen and lastly is that when we disciple others when we lead other people to Christ what happens is that we receive eternal dividends eternal dividends the Bible says that it's appointed unto man to die and then we stand in front of judgment when we stand in front of judgment of Jesus in Greek it's called bema or b-e-m-a it's a tribune for rewards in large Olympic arenas there was elevated seat on which the judge of the contest sat so when we say judgment seat of Christ I don't want you to think of Benton County Jail for some of you the moment you hear word judgment you're like oh Jesus no and Jesus is going to be the judge I'm definitely gonna be messed up no this is not a place where you come and you got a ticket and you're hoping that they're gonna reduce the price this is different this was more of like a place where if you compete in the game and you come in there to receive an award so this was not a place where you receive punishment but you receive rewards and so as Christians when you die you will stand before Jesus you already saved and you based on what you did for his kingdom for other people Jesus will determine if you're gonna get a reward in heaven let me destroy this little bubble that some of us have in our mind that in heaven everybody's gonna be equal that's not true in heaven people will have different crowns different positions and different possessions we're all not going to live in the mansion. I don't know where you got the idea that you're going to live in the mansion. Depends on what you sent there ahead of you. If you don't, if you don't waste your whole life, the Bible says some people in Corinthians will be saved as through the fire, meaning they will go to heaven and absolutely have nothing except their salvation. Because everything they did on this earth was only for themselves. So now the basic package of heaven is really good. The alternative is a lot worse. But there is rewards in heaven. Don't think that you're going to come in heaven and receive the same reward of people who were martyred or people who were serving Christ every single day. So I want you to live for this. Some of you, you are saving for your retirement. Save for something way, 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 way more important. That's your eternal life in heaven. Now hell on the other side is also going to have degrees. And Ryan, if you can put up the verse for us, what it says in Matthew chapter 10. Assuredly, I said to you, it will be more, more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than that city. Look at this word, more tolerable. Means in hell, toleration pain level is not going to be the same for everyone. Some people will have less pain, some more based on what they did to other people and how they responded to the gospel and Jesus says Sodom and Gomorrah is going to have less punishment in hell which tells me hell is not a big lake where everybody gets dumped into there is levels of punishment in hell as the way there is levels of reward in heaven now the basic package of hell is not good we just went through summer 100 degrees uh, cranked it up to 200 even if it's just hot like remove the worms remove the gnashing of teeth it's already bad I don't want to go it's really really bad whatever I have to do but I don't want to go there if it's just that hot but it's a lot worse than hot it, the Bible says it's darkness darkness is separation meaning every in, in earth right now you feel God's love everywhere you're in why because God's spirit is here you don't even if you don't believe in God even if you say I I'm an atheist you still feel God's love because the spirit is here he will never leave you when you go to hell every ounce of light every ounce of love and every ounce of hope that you ever felt will be vacuumed out of that place Bible says outer darkness and you may say why would a loving God send people to hell 
the real question is why would people reject a loving God the real question I have for you is this I think it will be unloving to force you to be stuck with God whose presence you don't like imagine your parents forcing you to marry someone you can't stand would you call that love if God will force you to go to heaven would you call him loving God gives you a choice I want you to see this verse that has become a cry of my heart it's in Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 14 in Isaiah chapter 5 verse 14 therefore Sheol is another word for hell the place of death has enlarged itself I want you to see this when Satan rebelled against God God created hell for the devil not for us and not even for angels but Satan recruited angels and rebelled against God with angels and guess what happened with hell it enlarged itself God created human race and God gave them perfect paradise and they rebelled against God hell enlarged itself hell initially was never meant to hold humans that's why it enlarged itself if our church shrinks hell enlarges if churches shrink, hell enlarges. Today, we are here in Tri Cities to shrink hell and enlarge the kingdom of heaven. That's why we believe in home groups. That's why we believe in discipling. That's why on September 14th, we are going to have a special training for people who are going to be leaders of groups. And I want to challenge you to be there. But right now, what we're going to do, first and foremost, is I want us to pray right now that the kingdom of heaven enlarges. Then I'm going to give a call for those people who you have to make a decision today to give your life to Christ because Jesus died on a cross for you. Some of you here today and you're, you're a religious person and you're convinced that just because you're religious it's going to get you saved. And I can tell you that being religious doesn't get you saved. Only following Jesus will. But we'll get to that in a moment. I want us to rise to our feet right now. And as you've risen to your feet, if you, if you don't mind and you, you, you're fine with your knees, I want you to kneel. To, to kneel. If, if your knees are, are good, you can kneel. Or you can sit if, if you can't kneel. And I want us to take a moment right now and we're going to pray. So Lord, you created heaven for people. Hell was created for the devil. It was not created for the citizens of Tri-Cities. We pray for the citizens of Tri-Cities. I want you to right now open up your heart. The way you know how, the best you know how, I want you to pray passionately and pray right now with persistence that God will begin to enlarge the kingdom of heaven in Tri-Cities and masses will come to know Jesus. Hell has to shrink. If it enlarged, it has to shrink and the kingdom of God has to expand in Jesus name. Let's pray church. In Jesus mighty name Father we come before you this afternoon God and we cry out. We're praying Lord. We're standing in a gap for those that are lost. Father you've put us for such a time as this. You put our church here for such a time as this. You brought us to this place together for such a time as this. To stand in the gap for those that are lost. To stand in the gap for those that walked away from you. To stand in a families, God, that got that never got never had a, a Christians in their in their family tree, God. Lord, we're praying for those for first time Christians, Lord. We're praying for those, God, that don't know you. For those that nobody's praying for, God. Today we stand in a gap. Lord, for those, Lord. And we're crying out. We're praying. We're seeking your face. And we ask you, God, give us the grace. Give us the power to God to populate heaven and to shrink hell, God. Give us the grace, Lord, to see many souls saved. Give us the grace, God. Open the windows of heaven, Lord, to see, Lord, the people come to know you and come to know the power of the cross in our midst, God, in our city, in our region, Lord. We don't want people, God, to hope to go to hell, God. We want to make it difficult to people to go to hell, God, as long as we are here in this city, as long as we are in our schools, in our communities, Lord, we want to shine the true gospel in our city in Jesus mighty name we pray I want us to rise to our feet right now I want you to take your neighbor's hand on your right and on your left and we're gonna pray for those people nobody else is praying for 
just take a moment right now my wife is going to lead that prayer let's begin to pray right now simple begin to pray that for those no one is praying for. even if it's your first time here and you're not a follower of christ just say a prayer right now for them let's pray right now for those no one is praying for in our city include your family members as well let's pray let's intercede every eye closed every mouth open every spirit open let's cry out to the lord right now yes jesus that no one is praying for God. We ask you, Lord, that you will begin to touch their lives, God. Every single sick person in the hospital, God, if, if they're on a deathbed, God, we ask you that you will touch their lives, Lord. We pray, Lord, for people who are lost in false religions, God. Those who don't want this praying for God, we're interceding right now on their behalf, God, and we ask you that you will supernaturally reveal yourself to them, Lord precious Holy Spirit we ask you that you will begin to draw hearts to Jesus Christ that you will begin to supernaturally reveal yourself to them God that their salvation will come in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray Lord we pray that in Jesus mighty name right now I want you to stretch your hands like this and we're going to pray right now just stretch your hands like this begin to pray Lord God we release home groups Let's begin to pray for the home groups. We, we're believing for 50 home groups that will be relaunched in the fall. And I want you to pray. Maybe God is calling you to be the home group leader in the fall for your friends, for your co-workers. You have place of influence. We will provide with you with material, with everything. But right now, let's begin to pray. So Lord God, release leaders in our church. Raise up leaders who will be pastors to people in our church. Come on. Let's begin to pray for the Intercede for that right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, right now, yes, in, the Father, in the name of Jesus, we cry out, right now, Lord, God, what would you, you care about most, Lord? The reason why you died, Lord, you want to see people saved. You want to see the kingdom expanded, Lord. Right now we pray, oh Holy Spirit, for our home groups, Lord. We pray for our home groups, Lord, for people to be mentored. Lord, we pray for people to come and plug in and grow, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, that the hearts be open to, to lead a home group, Lord. Please move in our hearts, oh Holy Spirit. Please change our hearts, God. Please take our focus off of ourselves. Please help us to see more than ourselves, God. Please help us to dedicate our life, God, to see souls saved, to see people mentored, Lord, that our finances, our family, our children will be given to the mission field, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for home group. Holy Spirit, move mightily. Holy Spirit, open the heavens and release a rain for home group, a rain of salvation, Lord. We pray that our city will be transformed. We pray that every person in our city will be saved through home groups, through mentorship, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus, yes, Holy Spirit, move. Yeah, we thank you, Lord God, that you are raising up 50 home groups during this fall season. We will see people healed, delivered, and baptized in the Holy Spirit. Lord God, we thank you that we will see people cared for, shepherded, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me, and you like to click on things, click on this, subscribe to our channel, and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.